Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Points of Articulation. My name's Dave, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Today, I'm looking at the Star Wars The Power of the Force Sand Trooper with Heavy Blaster Rifle. Now, the Sand Trooper you see before you made his first on screen appearance in Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. Now, for some fun facts, these troopers were basically used on desert planets such as Tatooine. Now, apparently, they had better systems than a normal stormtrooper, such as a ventilation system in the helmet. Even though, technically, with our naked eye, they look no different than normal stormtroopers. Two, what this box doesn't say is that it does come with a backpack, and that backpack actually has a name. Now, I hope I got this right. It's the SD-48 Survival Backpack, and inside you had supplies water, and also rations. So that's kind of neat. Now moving down, we have his blaster, which I believe is the T-21 light blaster. So that's pretty cool. And finally, let's talk about the pauldron, which is the shoulder guard on the side with the orange on it. Basically, they're used for right. You have a gray version for the sand trooper that's on a dewback. Black is usually for the enlisted. White for the sergeants. And then, like you see in front of you, we have orange, which is used for squad leaders or captains. So that's pretty awesome. And now for the sand trooper size, this guy stands at three and three quarter inches tall, which is pretty nice, and it goes well with the other action figures in the set, as we will soon see. So you guys know the drill now. This bad boy was released in 1996, and we have a lot to cover. We're going to look at the box real quick, the mold, articulation, paint, accessories, compared to some other action figures, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. All right, quickly taking a look at the box. We can see it's in collection number three, Star Wars, The Power of the Force. My box is a little damaged, but what are you going to do? We have Darth Vader with a sticker on there. Nice image of a sand trooper. Our figure, backpack, rifle, looking good. On the bottom, Kenner. On the back, we have a nice write-up, so let's get a nice close-up of that real quick. And here we have the close-up on the back of the box. If you would like to pause it and read the stats there, by all means, go right ahead and continue when you're done. And then moving down, we have some other action figures here. All looking good. Can't wait to look at Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. He's my favorite figure of all time in the line. Then we have the Skyhopper, a Snowspeeder, which I can't get this one. I got the Skyhopper, though, in box. Then we have Kenner, 1996, Hasbro. So... All in all, nice looking box, and so now let's take a look at the figure. All right, checking out the Sand Trooper. Like in all my reviews, I'll go over all the major sections of the figure, and then we'll get nice and close to see all the fine details. So up first, we have our helmet looking good, our shoulder pauldron, having some detail around there, and it's made out of a rubbery material, so that's cool. Looking at the back, we have a slit here for the backpack. We'll look at that later. And then we have the chest armor, which, uh... You know, just like all the Power of the Force figures, this Stormtrooper's been juicing. Then we have a uh, nice armor for the arms. The midsection's looking good. He has his belt, ammo pouches, leg and thigh armor with the shins and calves all covered up. Pretty good. Nice shoes. And then peg holes at the bottom of the feet. All in all, a pretty decent looking figure. So now let's get a close up look. All right, having our closer look, we'll begin looking at the helmet, and I think they did a decent job. We can see some beautiful recess work. We have his eye lenses, breathing apparatus, nice little recessed areas, molding. Pretty cool. And I love these two little recess areas. You can see some line work in there. Pretty sharp. All in all, great little mold here. Not exactly 100% accurate. But for 1996, pretty nice job. Moving down, let's look at the pauldron. We can see some nice detailing, some line work coming down. A little clip right here. Pretty cool, nice and flat. Again, another little fake clip. Some more line work. And like I mentioned, this is a rubber material, so it does move pretty easily. Moving on, let's look at the Stormtrooper's armor. We have some nice designs here. Pretty exaggerated with all the muscles, but pretty cool. For his waist, we have all these little buttons down here, looking great. On the back, you can see not so much detail, but just enough. We have the back right here with a slit, so that way the backpack can fit on. We'll look at that later. And then on the top, we do have 
Two little molded areas for the straps holding the armor on as you can see here. Pretty neat. Moving down to the arms, we can see some great detail in here. Little mold in there, pretty nice. Then we have the bicep area. Forearm, looking good. Not a lot of detail, but the molding is there. Pretty cool. We have some armor on his hand, and then also the fingers. For the other arm, we can see some great detail in here as well. Looking good. Some little wrinkles in the black fabric right there. Looking good. Again, we have armor right here over the hand. And then the fingers looking good. Pretty awesome. Coming down to the Sand Trooper's belt, I think they molded it quite well. Then we have an ammo pouch right here looking good. Belt continues. We have the little oxygen tank here. A little molding on the Stormtrooper's butt armor. Another ammo pouch. Looking amazing. Pretty cool. Then we have Stormtrooper crotch. Molded quite well. Now moving down on the leg armor. We have his thigh armor. You can see a little piece that's raised in the center. Looking good. And also the back. We can see the raised section. Pretty nice. Again, the black fabric with a little detail on there. Pretty nice. Then we have the calf armor and the shin. Looking good. I think the front always looks better. With that nice detailing. Pretty amazing stuff. Again on the back. Pretty cool. Then we have his feet. Not too much going on down here. Black soles. And then we have the copyright crap 1996 and peg holes. And that does it for the mold on the Sand Trooper. I hope I covered everything. I really didn't think about the white background with a white figure, so I hope it looks good. So now let's move on to the articulation. Now looking at the articulation of the Sand Trooper, there are six points. First of all, his head can rotate all the way around. For his arms, because of the mold, they are hindered. This hand can only go up and down a quarter of the way. This arm right here on the right hand side can rotate, it is hindered by the pauldron, but if you move the pauldron, it can spin all the way around. Move that back. He also does have waist articulation, which can spin all the way around. For his legs, they go that far forward, and about that far back. All in all, even though the articulation is a little hindered, it's not that bad. So now let's take a look at the paint. And now looking at that paint on the Sand Trooper, this trooper features about five different colors. First of all, a nice white from the helmet to the boots. Beautifully done. I think it came out great. Now on top of that white, we have a beautiful tan brown airbrush, which makes it look like the sand has made this trooper all dirty and it looks great. You can see all the little specks. It's heavy in the waist, but not too bad. And then even in the back, just an amazing job. They even went as far to put some on the helmet, which is pretty good. Nice attention to detail there. Now the next color up is black. We can see it in all the gaps of the armor, his gloves, the little ammo pouches, bottoms of the boots. You know, normal spaces where stormtroopers are normally black. Like the visors, the stripe, the breathing apparatus in the front. All in all, nicely done. Now besides that black, we do have a little gray. We can see it on the helmet at certain spots. In his abdomen. And that's about it for that. And finally, we have black and orange for the pauldron. Looking sharp. And as you can see, it does have a little gloss to it, which is great. All in all, a beautiful paint job on here, if I do say so myself. So now let's take a look at the accessories. I'm now checking out those accessories. The first one up is the survival backpack and I think it looks great. You can see all these little details, buttons and modules, little recesses, couple hoses, pretty cool. So let's look at it from the side. Very nicely done. The bottom, I love all the hanging bits here. Pretty awesome. We have that long pipe on the top. I guess from the bottom, pretty cool. 
And then on the back of it, it just has a little clip to attach to the Stormtrooper. So let's take a look at that real quick. To attach it to the Stormtrooper, just peg it in like so, and you're good to go. Looking good. And for the second accessory, we have the T21 Light Repeat and Blaster, and in my opinion, this is a magnificent interpretation of that weapon. Nicely detailed, we have our stock, our trigger. Oh man, I love all the detail on there. Pretty cool. It's made out of a rubbery material as well. But what are you going to do? Fantastic detailing. I think this came out great. Even the top is detailed. Awesome. Now there's two different ways the trooper can hold this. So let's take a look at that real quick. Now the first way to let your trooper hold this bad boy is to slin it around his arm. And it looks pretty cool like that. Now the other way used to get it into his hands. Now it's a little tricky for me because my fingers are fat. But anywho, you're going to get his uh, hand around there. Which is a little tricky, but doable. So we got one in. Now we're going to take this arm and slide the peg right in there. Position it correctly. And there you go. It kind of has an Aliens vibe. And if you ever saw the movie Aliens, you know what I'm talking about with the big guns. But really neat. So that does it for the mold, articulation, paint, and accessories. So now let's compare this toy with some other action figures before we conclude the video. And now for a quick size comparison with the Power of the Force Sand Trooper seen here. On the left hand side we have the Power of the Force C-3PO and R2-D2. And if you would like to see those reviews, click the link in the description below. And then moving on to the right hand side, we have the Star Wars Black Series 6 inch Sand Trooper, one of my favorites. And yes, it's real. All in all, some great looking figures here. And that does it today for my review of the Star Wars The Power of the Force Sand Trooper. Now, I've been after one of these for a while, and I'm very glad I got one. However, I'm not too happy with the pre posed arms, but I guess he needs it to hold the weapon, so what are you gonna do? I think the mold is pretty nicely done. I do like the paint job, especially with that dirty airbrush and make it look like sand and filth all over the armor. That's great. The articulation is what we've come to expect with the six points, and I think it works quite well for the figure. And the accessories are awesome. We get the Paldwin, the backpack, and the T21 light blaster, and I think it works. And that's everything I have to say about this Sand Trooper today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see new reviews every Thursday, click subscribe. Again, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch me. I greatly appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.